Rule number 24, verbs of accusing, condemning, and acquitting take the genitive case. There's a very little known genitive called the genitive of the charge or penalty that's at work here. Here's it in action. Arguit me furti. He accuses me of theft. The word furti is in the genitive case because it's the thing I'm being accused of or charged with. Tu absolutus est improbitatis. You were acquitted of outrage. While illi damnati sunt caedis. They were convicted of murder. And there's this phrase, peculatus damnatus, condemned for embezzlement. Peculatus is a fourth declension genitive that's reflecting the charge. In their grammar guide, Allen and Greeno list a set of genitives that fall under this rule commonly, and so here they are. Capitus, as in damnare capitus, to sentence to death, kind of like a capital punishment. Your head represents your life. Maestatis, treason. The word maestas uh, refers to the dignity of the country. So when you violate it, you're committing treason. Repetundarum, which is extortion, assume pecuniarum, so money that a provincial governor would twist out of the province. Money that is to be reclaimed. Woti, as in woti damnatus, bound to the payment of a vow. In pecuniae, as in pecuniae damnare, to condemn to the payment of money. And then there's dupli, or other proportional numerals, as in dupli condemnare, to condemn to pay twofold. The origins of this genitive of the charge or penalty come originally from the genitive of value, with the idea that the penalty will involve payment of money as debt or a fine. So like in our example with pecuniae damnare, to condemn to the payment of money, you can see how the genitive fits into the thought. And it's a short step then from the penalty to the charge itself. So goes rule number 24. Verbs of accusing, condemning, and acquitting take the genitive case.